Probably the most difficult and confusing concepts to understand about code handling operations are those of split handling requirements and complementary code components. The requirements established for the split handling of code components are important in preventing any single individual or group from obtaining knowledge of the complete coded information involved. This training program will cover the definitions and the procedures in dealing with split handling and complementary components. We will use several examples and illustrations to show you how handling operations work. To begin, let's define split handling and complementary components. SAC Regulation 5556, Volume 1, defines split handling requirements as co-components which require split handling are separated into two or more parts to prevent any single individual or two-man courier, manufacturing, or code production handling or installation team from obtaining knowledge of the total information involved. What this concept leads to is that certain code systems are divided into two or more components and controlled by different teams to preclude the complete information involved from being known by any one person or group. An easy illustration is the launch facility permutation plug, or LFP plug, and the coded launch facility load cartridge, or LFLC. The P-plug and LFLC, when brought together, can reveal the entire launch code. The enable, launch, and penetration codes are divided into two or more parts to preclude access to or knowledge of the complete code. The complementary component concept is an extension of split handling requirements and will be fully discussed later. There are four concept areas we need to discuss before going on to complementary components. These concepts are important to both split handling requirements and the concept of complementary components. They are code control groups, viewing restrictions, transport procedures, and storage procedures. Code control groups. All code components which require split handling controls and all code handlers are assigned to either code control group A or B. Each split handling designated component is handled by a team of at least two code handlers of the same code control group as the components they control. Only code handlers assigned to a particular control group are authorized to handle components assigned to their control group. They are prohibited from handling or gaining control of components assigned to the opposite control group. Here are two examples to show this concept. Missile maintenance teams, MMT, are assigned to code control group A and will handle or control the LFP plug which is assigned to code control group A. And electromechanical teams, EMT, are assigned to code control group B and will handle or control the LFLC which is assigned to code control group B. Viewing restrictions. Within SAC, the viewing of the coded contents of any code component is prohibited except as specifically authorized by SAC Regulation 5556, Volume 1. As code handlers, you are strictly prohibited from viewing the coded portion of any code component. To illustrate this concept, you cannot view the internal wiring of an LFP plug or the coded portion of the LFLC magnetic tape. Transport Procedures Operationally effective Group A and B code components must be transported separately and under the control of separate code handling teams of the same control group as that of the component. In addition to this requirement, if the components are complementary to each other, they must have a minimum of 30 minutes separation when outside the physical confines of the Strategic Missile Support Base, SMSB, and the Launch Facility, LF, or Launch Control Facility, LCF. To illustrate, a code change verifier, CCV, is to be transported to Launch Facility Alpha 10 to install the enable code in the Command Signals Decoder Missile, CSDM. 
and a coded Launch Enable Control Group Signals Panel, LECG, is being transported to Charlie Launch Control Center, LCC. The CCV, a Group B component under the control of two Group B code handlers, has to maintain at least 30 minutes separation, travel time, from the LECG, a Group A component, being transported by a missile combat crew to Group A code handlers. Storage procedures. Vaults, storage containers, and combination locks are used to ensure proper control over stored components. Storage containers, carrying cases, locks, and lock combinations are configured and controlled to ensure that only appropriate code handling teams are permitted access to the components. To illustrate, two Group B code handlers will place an LFLC into a carrying case and affix two code handler locks to the carrying case. At an LF, an MMT wants to temporarily store an LFP plug in the Missile Guidance System, MGS van. Two Group A code handlers will put the code component into the van and lock the van with their code handling locks. Two very important points about storage are Group A and Group B code components will never be stored in the same container at the same time. And all code components not stored in the code's vault or not properly installed require guarding by a two-man concept team. So far, we have defined split handling requirements and complementary components. To help understand these concepts better, we discuss the concepts of code control groups, viewing restrictions, transport procedures, and storage procedures. Now we're ready to combine these two concepts. The complementary components concept is probably the easiest way to fully explain both. Complementary components fit into three categories. Let's explain these by case. They are within the same squadron, for the same MGS, and for the same computer or storage device. The first case of complementary components is within the same squadron. Numerous permutations of the enable code allows each squadron to have its own unique format to achieve the enabling of the squadron's missiles. The components that are associated with a squadron's enable code are the coded CCV, which is used to encode a missile's CSDM. The CCV and CSDM, when coded, are both Group B code components and must be controlled by two Group B code handlers. The coded LECG, which is used in the LCC to add the on-lock values for transmission to the missile. When the LECG is coded, it is a Group A code component requiring control by two Group A code handlers. The second case of complementary components is for the same missile guidance system, or MGS. Each sortie's MGS is coded with an individually coded LFLC, which is a Group B code component and is controlled by two Group B code handlers. The LFLC has been coded in the codes vault using one of a pair of LFP plugs. The second P plug of the set is installed in the MGS. P-plugs are Group A components and are controlled by Group A code handlers. If the MGS fails and becomes an LFLC-coded MGS, it is complementary to its P-plug. If the MGS fails and becomes a Lodge-coded MGS, it is complementary to its P-plug as well. For all three conditions, the LFP plug must be transported separately from the coded LFLC or MGS, and a minimum of 30 minutes separation time is required. The third and last case is with the computers and storage devices used in the ICBM force. The penetration code is a software code on a magnetic tape cartridge used to secure the data in a computer or storage device. 
For each computer or storage device, the MGS, WSC, or MCG, the penetration codes to lock and or unlock the computers are complementary to each other. The pen C code closes or locks the computer or storage device. And the pen D code opens or unlocks the computer or storage device. The reason for making the pen C and D codes complementary is to preclude locking a computer with the pen C and subsequently unlocking it with the pen D to preclude the same team from regaining access. As an added precaution, complementary pen C and pen D codes will not be allowed out of the codes vault at the same time. To summarize, we have covered the definitions of split handling and complementary components. And we've explained some of the procedures associated with split handling and complementary components. These procedures included code control groups, viewing restrictions, transport procedures, and storage procedures. To further explain the concepts of split handling, we covered complementary components within the same squadron, for the same MGS, and for the same computer or storage device. Remember, split handling requirements and the concept of complementary components serve the purpose of preventing any single individual or group from obtaining or having knowledge of a complete code. These are just two of the ways in which we handle and control code components, thereby ensuring their safety and security. This concludes this program on split handling and complementary components. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact any instructor for assistance.